hey what's up guys so i had made a previous video and it was like 40 minutes long but somehow the recording got corrupted so i'm gonna make the same video i'm try to discuss the same topics but i'm not sure like what i went over so i'm just gonna go over like what i went over in that video again so um, to start it off your daily missions you want to get all of the energy ones done and collect them and hopefully you're able to use up all the energy so that you regen throughout the night uh, right now i'm gonna collect all of these energy missions and hopefully i don't fall asleep i have habit of doing that and i'm actually about to hit level 21 so i'm gonna have way more energy than what I should be holding and I'm about to do the collect three green easter eggs and then I might do this mission still for the gold um though those are not as high priority for me personally because um they don't gain you energy for doing that now the quests these are just like um, progression um, throughout the game. No, you shouldn't be in a rush to do these because the rewards are all right. But I mean, you can do these whenever at leisure, in my opinion, because like these are nice, but um, it's not gonna give you much. It's basically like five legendary soul stones. The Enigma shards are great, and Enigma's a very good hero, but there's probably better options out there, like Stealth Elf, and Boomer. Boomer's obviously a very good hero. Now this is what I do um, with my Omni Stones. I believe I got some more Omni Stones from doing one of those missions to clear like some floor. So... You go into this, you click on the add button, use Omni Stones. And I, I probably use them, but um, I just add Boomer. Boomer's a very good hero, and you want to upgrade them. Mine is already at plus five, and I just need 55 more to upgrade him to a five star and two levels so i want to see if i can do the scenario for boomer but it's gonna be extremely difficult so i want to upgrade my heroes a bit more and farm some runes for to be able to do that th that scenario now i was saying in the other night video how some people say like oh like the five stars the nat fives aren't as good because oh you can power them up and early on they're they're good but then later on they fall off because you can't power them up because you can't get the soul stones to upgrade them but you can ask for soul stones and you can go into the arena the arena shop and there's these you can do wild storm buy his um soul stones you get three wild 18 wild um wild storm soul stones per week and you can also exchange five legendary soul stones three times for 15 so you can um get about six times 18 15 33 wild storm soul stones per week and that's just um wild storm you can also use your 15 per week to upgrade say another another um hero this is not 15 since you have to use i believe two per each so it's actually um two 14 7 7 soul stones per week but that's still better than nothing and you're also buying like these um premium omni stones and the rare omni stones to upgrade your other heroes 
Now looking at like the stats, this is a net five right here. He has nineteen hundred attack, base attack, and let's see, um, stealth elf. Same level, but she has about two hundred less attack, and the major difference. Being, I look at this, Boomer, Kaboom has way more attack than Ambush, and he has way more stats from his runes, so saying that a hero is not good because you can't power him up is false. Because rune quality is the most important thing in this game. If you have bad runes, look at my ambush's runes. 3 star, 3 star, 2 star. These are terrible runes. So his, his stats are not going to be great either. The 500 attack. I mean look at, look at Kaboom. I look at his runes. I have this at plus 9. It gives him 396 extra attack, a plus 3 to his crit rate. And I believe I have this tough strike rune too. Gives him plus 15 attack, plus 1 crit damage, and plus 77 attack. Look at this room right here. Defense plus 156, which isn't as important because Kaboom is an offensive hero. But crit damage plus 1%, crit rate plus 3%. And this one has plus 4 crit damage. And this one has plus 1 crit rate. So if you look at his stats, he has about 2300 attack and then a thousand extra just from his runes. His crit rate is up to 44%. And look at, look at Ambush. You see, all of his stats are way lower. His crit rate is 24%. So saying that a hero is bad because you can't ambush him, is, I mean, you can't power him up, is not, like, the complete story. Because, look at me, like, this was my nat 5 that I was born with, and I've gotten 24 legendary soul stones for him. Um... And I haven't even, I haven't even done much of like anything. I haven't purchased any gems and free to play on this game. And all I've been doing is just summoning. That's what I've been doing. Summons, ultra premium summons, uh, 20 points. I can pick which Skylander I'm going to get. I'm going to get um, Stormblade since he's the uh, most powerful, um, Legendary at the moment, and you can request one legendary per day, which isn't as good as, say, a rare or a premium hero. Everybody is requesting Kaboom, so it's kind of like redundant, but there's also this. I only purchased this one time, I believe, and that was when I, like, on the first couple of days that I had started, but now I purchased Tri Tip since I already have Ambush. And Ambush is an okay hero, but for AFK farming, he's not as good because of the charge time. And if he gets knocked down, it resets the timer, so he's not as good to to buy. But Tri Tip is a good tanky hero, and I wanna I wanna have as many versatile like heroes as possible. So I'm going to go for Tri-Tip since he's a nat 5 and you can purchase him from the guild shop. Now, some are saying that these statues are good, but, like, it's just 1%. Like, let me show you. 1%, like, that life tree thing gives you 1% HP. Look at my runes. Plus 4% HP just from one rune. Like... And these are just 4 star runes. 
if you get five star runes, six star runes, like sure the one percent will add up if you get a flat stat like that. But you can also get a plus four percent sub stat. So it kind of defeats the purpose of getting a statue and only getting a one percent increase when you can just get a higher quality rune that's gonna have plus five percent HP. It's kind of like you're wasting your your resources on that. And if you're free to play, when are you gonna when are you gonna have the resources to upgrade like I mean the guild shop is determined through like guild activity and all that stuff. But getting these and using them, it's gonna be like in my opinion it's pointless for free to play. Because when you're farming the PvE scenarios, you don't even need the extra stats. And then for the pay, pay to play, they do need those extra stats because they are going to be using like plus 15 level 6 legendary runes. And that's when the plus 1 HP will make a difference in the high tier arena. But in scenarios like B8, B9 and all that stuff, once you're able to farm it consistently once you upgrade your runes like later on down the line like this is what a lot of players like don't understand like initially when you're starting sure it's gonna be difficult but once you're a year into the game you're gonna be able to farm this like farm your scenarios pretty easily and then you're gonna start working on speed teams to speed clear everything that's what summoners wars like um, when come to us started the game it was extremely difficult they added some legendary heroes some e some other tier free to play heroes some light some light hero i think um bella is one of the best light heroes in the game because in summoners war she awakened she um has a mass heal and a buff so like Come to us, this isn't new for them. Like, these statues are in Summoner's War. And sure, the, like, getting them and working on them forever, like, you'll get some nice stats, like, but it's gonna be for one tier. For one, like, life, plus one HP, just for life heroes, like, you might not even use, like, like, ambush, you might not even use them later on down the line. Her stealth health, they might get reworked or nerfed. And then maybe a fire hero or a air hero like Stormblade. Stormblade is a tier 1 hero at the moment. Or Kaboom is a fire hero. So getting one statue is like, it doesn't even help Kaboom or Stormblade or um, any of the other elements at all. So it's kind of redundant to to um focus in on a statue and i already went over the missions right so you, you want to clear as many of your daily missions as possible and come on load um there's some missions like the mirage tower i only did it because um I was in a stage where the next, the following stage gave me 30 energy and then the stage after that gave me 20 omni stones. So I got, I wasted I think about 15 energy and then I got 30 energy back. So that's the only reason why I did that. Can we see it? Let's see challenges and Mirage Tower. Yeah. Oh, I haven't done it. Um, that's why I couldn't find those 20 Omni Stones. But I got this Ultra Premium Ticket. That's why I went for it. I was on this stage for the gold. And then this one gave me energy. And then that was the Ultra Premium Ticket. So I went for it. But the, the Cave of Gold, um, I do. I already, I think I already went over it in a previous video. But I only do the second stage because it uses up 5 energy and you can do it relatively easily. You won't struggle 
with it and it only costs you 15 energy to do all three stages um any higher uses up like too much energy in my opinion and for the gold it's worth it but uh, for me it's not because I'd rather have my energy to farm the shards for Kaboom since I still need to farm seven seven more um shards to get them to plus four and I need to farm the elixirs. And I'm also gonna need to farm uh, a large medium elixir for Kaboom as well. So it like for me it's probably not worth it just to waste the energy on um doing other stages where they don't give you energy back and the gold is not as important because I'm not you I'm not powering up my runes. Like I I have powered up some runes but those were for like other missions to power them up. Like the weekly missions and all that stuff. Like there, there's a reason for each thing that I do. Because you don't want to waste like your resources as a free-to-play player. Like that's one, one of the reasons why I haven't even powered up my stealth elf. Because um, she's a good arena hero. And she's good in a lot of game modes. Because they give you so many of her soul stones. But personally, like, she's, she's single target. Sure, she hits, like, pr very hard. But she's single target. And that's one of the reasons why I don't really like her. Because, um... I like AoE heroes. Like, Kaboom, once you awaken him, his skill becomes AoE. And his, um, first skill is hits two targets sometimes. So that's pretty good. Boomer is one of the best heroes. Um, his skill, his third skill, hits all enemies, and that's very good. And Blast Zone, his second skill, I believe, um, hits, fires a laser beam at all the enemies and lowers their defense. And then his um. Leader power increases the explode damage by 6% of all allies in adventures and challenges. And Kaboom and Boomer both do explode. Jumps onto the enemy and casts explode for 5 turns. So these guys together um, are super good. And I, I want to show you like the difference between like. Nat 5 and Nat 2. You see that? Like, this guy's maxed out at level 30. I mean, sure, he has more defense. Look at the difference in HP, attack. And this guy has level 4 runes. Like, I could power them up. But I'm just gonna leave him on him because look, this guy has some level four runes and mostly level three runes. Like you can just see the difference um that the runes make in a hero. Like powering them up is very important, but powering up only gives you plus thirty, forty, plus thirty. What is that? 6, 20, 36 attack, and like 12 defense, and 60 HP, while your runes give you 400 attack, 100 defense, 542 HP, 4% crit rate, 4% accuracy, 6% Effect accuracy and 8% effect res resistance. Like look at all the look at all the stuff that your runes give you versus just powering up a hero. Powering them up only gives you attack, defense, and HP. 
Like, I don't want to sound like a broken record. But when somebody tells you, like, Nat Fives are overrated, like, sure, for the long term, like, in the short term, they're better versus the other heroes that you can actually power up and farm. But if you work on them, give them good runes, they're still very usable characters. Sure, it'll take you a while to awaken them, but if you farm um, Arena for those legendary Omni Stones and you get lucky from your pulls, like that's why uh, when people say save your gems for the energy, like come to us is already generous with energy like i'm already like um capped all the time and i'm already gonna be level 21 like it's not energy really isn't the issue for free-to-play players and it never will be what is gonna be the difference is the is the soul stones Free to play players cannot get soul stones fast enough. Even pay to play players, pay to play players like struggle getting the soul stones that they need to upgrade their heroes as well. That's why they roll their gems for um for heroes because if they get lucky with their pulls, then they're gonna they're gonna be able to um. Awaken and power up and do everything to their heroes and then they're gonna be farming like B8, B9 All those scenarios to get like the legendary elixirs and the medium stuff and they don't have to focus on the adventures because They don't need they don't need to farm Like they don't need to farm Kaboom, they can just um roll for him or they don't even need to farm Whamshell because they could just, they can just buy them. Boomer, they can just buy the soul stones. There was a pack for Boomer the other day where they had two hundred, um, soul stones for like thirty dollars. So it's they're not gonna be like pay to play players are not gonna be short on, on soul stones because they can just buy them. So for free to play players, like for me currently, once I get to twenty in the ultra premium summon, where you can pick it, you can pick your legendary hero. I'm gonna pick um Stormblade, and then after that, I don't know if it's worth like going through this whole thing again because because the three point is only for the first time. And the 10 point, like, 40 heroic soul stones of a random. Like, each stage is worth it, in my opinion. Like, rolling heroes in this game is way more generous than Castle Clash, the game um, that most of us played before. Because each stage lets you pick a hero. Like, getting 40 soul stones of a hero that you can pick, like, getting 40 for my Freeze Blade. Will definitely help me like power him up and upgrade him. And Freeze Bleed is a very good hero that you can farm from scenarios. I believe you can farm him from the Misty Bug Hard, which is I think stage two or stage four, stage seven. No, it's not. It's stage 2. Yeah, it's stage 2. You can farm him from stage 7. So it's like... um, Just because an, uh, Nat 5s are harder to get doesn't mean you shouldn't upgrade them. Like I said, runes make all the difference in the game. If you have good runes, you're gonna be beating up on like lower quality players because your rune quality is just superior. 
And right now, a lot of people don't even have Awakened Heroes. If they do have them Awakened, they're more likely pay to play. And you're not gonna be able to beat them anyways, because they're gonna probably have higher room quality than you as well. Like, look at my runes. I have a lot of 3-star runes, and uh, I've been farming Kaboom. So I have um, better strike runes, but I don't have, like, I ha he still has these two star runes because um i didn't have uh, any higher quality and i wanted to give him the effect but i might change them out for like energy or something since having such low quality runes is not that helpful so you want to have higher quality runes four star runes five star runes and six star runes since that's what's going to give you the advantage over say a powered up hero Obviously, powering them up and awakening them is going to make them way stronger. But, it's not necessary to have strong heroes. And you can just see that. The difference between Kaboom and Ambush. The rune quality is a higher difference than the just being a 4 star and 5 star. Kaboom is a nat too and he has way better stats because of the runes. He's gaining 900, 900 attack from his runes. If I had those runes on ambush, he would be a he would have comparable stats and my kaboom would be way weaker if he had the runes of ambush so this is like starting to get like super ranty and i'm repeating myself a lot but i just want to hammer the point home that room quality is more important than anything else because if you have bad runes you're gonna lose to other players and eventually they're gonna start selling like legendary runes so it's gonna be uh, for now it's, it's a very fun game i really like it um you can see the i already did the this one gives you the gold eggs i did the green eggs already from this stage so I need to do stage 4 and grab these eggs right here and oh yeah, let me show you my heroes because I don't remember if I went through them but I'm working on freeze blades right freeze freeze blade right now and I have them in my lineup um with I just put kaboom so he gets experience as well and I put Boomer since Boomer is my like my ace hero or um blast zone. But for now I'm using Boomer since I want to get him to level 50. So he's ready when I have the shards for him. And all these heroes I try to get them to level 20 so I can get the 50 shards for it. Once they're all level 20 I start going to level 30 with some of them. Like some of the better ones like this guy. This guy is pretty good DPS and he heals, so I wanna work on him. And this guy, I have about 111 of his soul stones. Like, if I have, I think, or some guy, I think his name is like Thunderbolt or something. This guy, I have 400 of his soul stones and I can awaken him. But the sad thing is, he's a, like, a really low tier character even in the like the descriptions whatever i've checked and nobody nobody uses him as like a he's not a really uh usable character this guy's pretty good with um free zone i believe or wild storm i forget which with who but he's a pretty good character 
So I want to level him up as well, that's why I'm currently working on him. And I have 55 of this guy. I have 132 of this um, Thunderbolt guy, and I'm not sure if he's good yet. But I'm going to take him up to level 20 regardless. So let's see. I have 84 of this guy. I'm not sure if he's good or not. I have some of her. She looks pretty cool. But again, I'm not sure how good she is. I have a lot of this guy. I believe he's a tier 2 character. But I haven't really upgraded him yet because... I just, I don't know. I don't know if he's good or not. Sash is an enemy with his broad sword. Launches this form of one that insects towards an enemy cast. Diminish for one turn and grants for to the ally with the highest attack. So this guy might actually be good with like a boomer boomer. And he's a, he's a poison hero, which... Helps me take out grass, um. So he's he might be good against stealth elf. So I might work on him. Since I do have a lot of his um. His. Soul stones, so I might run out. But I believe he's in the hero exchange. So once I get Smolder Dash, I might um get some of his soul stones. Since it'll be pretty good, but I'm definitely gonna see like um, who are some of the better characters I have and who's gonna be like usable or not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end off the video here since it's already pretty long and it's starting to really log out on me. So I hope um you found it useful. And if you have any questions just let me know online chat or what um wherever you can reach me and I'll try to answer them um based on my point of view. And there's some more stuff that I could go over, like the skills and crit rate is something that I was actually looking up today, but I'll, I'll go over that like in another, another day.